A few days ago, Isotropics released their next generation GPU and CPU render to early access. So today I wanted to take a look at kind of my thoughts on it and where I see it heading and just kind of an overall look at the new render engine. So first off, you need to go to Clarice's website and go over to the Angie tab and it is actually free to use if you uh, use the PLE, so the Personal Learning Edition. You just scroll down and select your version. So for me, I was using Windows. Just select that, download it, and you can start using the updated uh, render engine. So there are some limitations to it. You can see all of those here. If I take a look at them, some of the ones to note, motion blur is disabled. Volume rendering is partially supported. Uh, let's see, where's some displacement limitations? OSL isn't fully, OSL actually and Material X aren't fully supported. There is another one, opacity and clip maps are not supported, as well as emission important sampling. So any of your heavy emission based scenes definitely aren't gonna be ready to be used inside of the new Angie render engine. But let's go ahead and take a look in here. So like I said, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is download and install the new 5.5 early access. So to start off here, the render engine, if you go into preferences by default, it will be set up if you click on rendering, at least it was for me, I believe it should just by default be set to Angie. But if you wanna go back to the old render, so the old Clarice render engine, you can go ahead and do that by just selecting that and you will be set back to your default render. So some things to note with the new render engine is there are some changes to your toolbar here. So if specifically you go to your shading mode, they only have three shading modes now. You no longer have the whole list of shading modes that we had with the old Clarice render engine. You have just your straight simple shading, which to be honest is probably what I use the most right next to PBR. I use those the two most. Occasionally I use previs. There are some changes to previs. Um, they work uh, really well. There's different lighting scenarios. So if I click on this, you can see that I can change between the lighting scenarios and get some different looks, get a different idea of kind of what your lighting is going to look like, what your materials are going to look like. And that's kind of nice. Uh, but like I said, I don't really use it all that much. I mainly just stick to PBR and the simple shading for the most part, but uh, if you wanna use that previs, it is there for you as well. And it does look a little bit better if you up or add in some, some ambient occlusion there. Looks uh, pretty close to PBR actually. Pretty, pretty good there. So uh, definitely worth taking a look at, but the other thing here that you'll see, we have our percentage of how it's going to render. So if this is set to 100%, it's going to render up to 100% of the samples that you have set. But you also have this button next to it that uses the CPU or the GPU. So by default, it'll be set to CPU. You see it cleans up pretty quick here. And if you set it to GPU, it is insanely quick. So there are uh, some limitations, like I said, to the different uh, render engines. So the Clarice materials you see, uh, the old ones you were able to use clip maps and opacity, that's not yet supported. If I zoom into these leaves you see we have these black outline. And if I take a look at my material here, go over to our leaf, you see I do have the clip map enabled, so nothing there. And I believe I did set up the material to have a opacity map as well. Yep, just wired into opacity. You'd see not working in either case. So that does kind of suck. So any of your kind of nature scenes, you're gonna have to hold off on for a little bit until the uh, the opacity maps are supported. This is going to be something that is progressively going to be updated. So it's not just gonna be like, okay, we have this early access release and then we have to wait six months for the 5.5 full release or whatever it may be, I don't know if it's six months or a year or whatever it may be, but uh, supposedly it's going to be updated continuously. We'll get some nice updates along the way, 
like we do with the full release with the service pack. So looking forward to that. I'm hoping to see these opacity maps being introduced uh, pretty quick, but there are some other some other issues that I've kind of found with uh, OSL and the Material X. Like I said, definitely want to take a look at uh, the limitations that we have here. Material X uh, took quite a bit of trying to play around with it to even get it working um, like somewhat correctly. I had to ask some questions in the Discord, which luckily enough the developers were kind enough to help me out with. So I haven't really used Material X all that much, just a little bit inside of Houdini, not too much anywhere else, but uh, you do have to do some inversions and different things to get the materials to work properly with the UVs and stuff like that. So uh, not where I would say Material X is was needed to be, but wherefore I would say go ahead and use it. And to be honest, Material X is kind of like USD, in my opinion. It's a little bit confusing and uh, hard to get into when you're first starting out. So definitely look forward to messing around with that more though because it is super powerful. Also, you have OSL support. So we had OSL in the original Clarice render and uh, they're working on the implementation inside the, the new render as well. So if I actually go to our scene here, our main scene, I was just playing around with some stuff um, in here, but we have, by default, you're gonna have your image, you're gonna have your ng render. And if I look in here, we have some different things inside of here as well. So we have a GPU or CPU mode, so you can select it inside of there. By default, it is going to be CPU, which it is a lot faster than the old CPU render, um, but uh, the GPU is definitely where you're gonna wanna be heading. Uh, but another thing to note is that if you look in here with our limitations, multi-GPU rendering not yet enabled, which sucks for anybody that has multiple GPUs, but that will be coming down the road. Also, we have these render quality presets here. So pretty much a standard thing inside of other renders now. It's becoming kind of a, a default thing where we have render presets that we can choose. So something interesting here is we have standard dynamic range. So this is gonna be like, if you're just trying to render straight to PNGs and stuff like that, you're gonna to wanna to use these presets maybe. Whereas if you're gonna do some compositing, you're probably gonna to wanna to use the HDR, HDR presets, so the high dynamic range. That way you have some more control um, inside of your, your post. But you can always go in and control these manually as well. It's um, all the different sampling stuff in there. There also is, and most of these you see we have Angie settings as well in our materials. So there's different controls inside of there. Definitely want to take a look in that. AOVs, we still have AOVs with Angie as well, which is nice. So a lot of a lot of cool stuff here inside of the new Angie render. Not fully supported, but it is getting there. And to be honest, it is really, really fast from what I've seen so far. So I'm looking forward to putting it up against some uh, more complete scenes. I haven't actually had enough time yet to really throw a, a good scene, good complete scene at it. Spent quite a bit of time messing with Material X trying to figure that out, uh, bashing my head against the wall. But I do look forward to making an actual scene here that I can throw a nice render into with some volumes and different stuff like that that will actually put it through its paces. But these default uh, render settings right here on our renders, so this 5% noise threshold, not too much with the 960 by 540 uh, default image view, but it rendered like 2 million, uh, or sorry, not 2 million, 2 trillion poly scene in like three seconds on the GPU with this 5% noise threshold, which was is pretty quick. Uh, it's like a minute on the new render on the CPU, but I do have a 3090 in my system, so pretty strong render, um, or pretty strong GPU there. So I'm definitely looking forward to playing around with this more. Definitely wanna check it out if you haven't already. I definitely think that there is a strong uh, case to be made to use Clarice just as your main render once this goes full release because it's gonna be really, really fast. And to be honest, nothing beats this having your millions and millions of polygons in your scene, not having to wait for things to load up, 
just seeing your models and your scene as is is just extremely powerful save you a lot of time when you're actually building your scene so take a look at it like i said there is a free ple edition that you can go and download there are some limitations to the ple as well but uh it's definitely going to be worth taking a look at with that so if you haven't already go ahead and take a look at it perfect time to jump into clarice if you're thinking about getting it it's uh definitely getting more and more accessible and definitely something that you're going to want to keep an eye on in the future as this gets closer and closer to the full release but anyways hopefully this gave you an insight into the new angie render take a look at this website with all the angie videos on there there's a bunch of really cool stuff on there as well definitely want to watch the presentation as well that's uh something that will give you a lot better insight into everything that its limitations and kind of where it's headed I talk a lot about it and uh some good information in there but anyways thank you guys for watching check out the other videos on my channel i got a bunch on houdini as well as some stuff on clarice cinema 4d redshift and a little bit on octane as well if you're interested in any of that check those out but anyways thank you guys for watching and have a good day